Well, good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder, and this is BRN AM for Monday, April 20th, 2020. And our top stories today, pandemic paradigm shift in the financial advisory business and what this all means for investors. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Brian Portnoy is the founder of Shaping Wealth, a financial wellness consulting firm. Brian, thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Hi, happy to be here. Thank you. Well, so much going on um, in, in our country and our economy in terms of the pandemic and how we're changing our business practices. But what I really want to talk to you about is how business has changed for the financial advisory community in light of this pandemic. Yeah, it's an interesting question. It's a big question. Uh, let, let me set the table by providing a brief history, which is that going back a few generations, there really wasn't a financial planning industry. There was a brokerage industry and people were buying and selling stocks and bonds on behalf of others, but it really wasn't uh, sitting down and talking about goals and building a plan and things like that. Over the last 20 plus years or so, that's changed relatively quickly. And now you have a massive financial advice, financial planning industry, but even that is um, evolving into something even more, which I would call holistic uh, financial life planning, meaning that uh, it's just not about stocks and bonds. It's just not about building a portfolio. But when we look across different dimensions of what I call money life, saving, spending, investing, insuring, borrowing, and so forth, we now have uh, helpers. We have planners and advisors who can um, help us navigate uh, all of those difficult decisions in light of the fact that um, uh, the world has become a very noisy and complicated place, overwhelmed by information, overwhelmed by choice. And now you put a global pandemic and a, and a global financial crisis on, on top of that whole changing landscape. And advisors are um, more needed than ever and also having to pivot. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and they were needed, I think, before, and now they're even more so. We have so many Americans who are unemployed that are struggling to pay their rent or their or mortgage. They're supporting their families, their spouses, their partners, et cetera. Technology, Brian, seems like a great way. You and I are Skyping together, and it seems to be the new normal where people Skype or now Zoom using the latest technology to engage people. Is this just a current fad or will this be a new paradigm shift for financial advisors and people in the holistic budgeting space? Well, I think that the type of conversation you and I are having and now everybody's Zooming with everybody else all the time, you know, there's <laughs> lots of jokes about Zoom fatigue, which I, I, I feel a little bit myself. Um, <laughs> The financial planning industry is already there. I mean, very personal example, my dad lives in Florida. His financial advisor lives in Chicago. I think they've physically met in person three times in the last 10 years. And most of what they do is over Skype or some sort of uh, video call. You know, so what, one issue that you're raising, which is good, is sort of the technology by which the advice is given. And then the second issue is, well, what is what is the nature of, of that advice? And I think what this uh, crisis and this pandemic are highlighting is the fact that um, you need a plan, that it's very hard in real time to respond to a crisis, especially like this one, if you don't already have a plan in place. And the idea isn't to punish or scold people who don't have one, but to reinforce you know, the observation for everybody that if you didn't have a plan, man, it's, it's time now to really think about what you're doing with your finances. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, we used to joke in the retirement industry, not joke, but say on the quarterly statement, remember to complete and fill out your beneficiary form. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think of a more important time given what's been happening with this pandemic. Number one, to have it in beneficiary form, but more importantly, 
how are you gonna transfer your wealth should something happen to you either today or 30 years down the road? And I think actually being in a quarantined or working from home or social distancing environment actually lends itself very well to reconsidering your financial picture. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, it, it's a weird time, Jeff. I mean, it feels like everything is standing still, but then moving at a million miles an hour. And, you know, we all have the things that we wanted to do that if, if we only had a lot of time uh, on our hands, some extra time, we would go ahead and do it. Things like fill, filling out forms and it ends up that we never really wanted to do that stuff anyway, no matter how much time we had. Um, the hard part, but the important part is that uh, th this is the opportunity to get our financial houses in order. We are, most of us, sitting home and we have through electronic connection to our financial institutions, to our advisors, to our employers, the opportunity to sort of put together a balance sheet, put together you know, a list of goals and, and a list of things that you, that you want to accomplish. And, and begin to really think through what's important and whether you can afford those things. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that is, and I want to get to the participant or the retail investor in our second segment when we come back from commercial break. But one more question for this segment, Brian. You know, leading up to the pandemic, there was a lot of talk about robo advisors, right? Mm -hmm. And using technology and an algorithm and artificial intelligence to help right. you invest smarter, better. Does, I think that there's a place for that, but I also think there's a really important place for the human, for the human connectivity, whether it's through this medium that we're using or whether it's through other, other means. Um, where do you see this kind of ending up post pandemic? Do you think more people move towards the robo advisor model? Do you think it, or just it continues its, ascendancy? The future is bionic. The future is not fully human. It's not fully robotic. It's right in the middle. Uh, there's no doubt that money is such an emotional topic and we need to be talking to other people about uh, these sorts of things. Everything from basic budgeting to, you know, what what is the life that I want to lead? Who do I want to become? Uh, all of those conversations can be had in a way that's assisted by augmented and even improved by technology. But there's no doubt that even if you're going through a quote unquote robo advisor, having the opportunity to get help, to get assistance, it could be in a live conversation. It could be in a chat box. It could be in a whole variety of different formats. But uh, I'll just leave it by saying that the, the, the future is bionic. And, and I think that's a very good outcome for all of us. Yeah, you make me think of the six million dollar man. I'm really dating myself. Six million dollar oh, man and the too. bionic woman. <laughs> well, Brian, I want to hold you over. When we come back, we're going to look at things from the investor's perspective with Brian. So stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN.
the Broadcast Retirement Network. The windows on our homes, they protect us in the ones we love, but they do much more. At Renewal by Anderson, making your home more comfortable is at the center of every window we make. It's why we custom build our windows in America and install them in as little as one day. It's why we build our frames with exclusive Fibrex composite material that's two times stronger than vinyl. It's why our glass helps keep your home warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and quieter all year long. It's why we stand behind every window with a 20-year limited warranty. Why not help lower your energy costs while giving your home and family the best? Call 1-800-835-6525 to schedule a free in-home consultation. Buy one, get one at 40% off with this special offer. Plus, get special financing with no money down, no monthly payments, and no interest for one full year. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Call 1-800-835-6525 now. Welcome back. We're talking to Brian Portnoy. He is the founder of Shaping Wealth, a financial wellness consulting firm. Brian, thanks so much for sticking around this morning. I'm happy to be here. It's always great to pick your brain and to get your perspective. And you've been a longtime leader in the investor education arena and really happy to get your perspective here. Uh, so in our first segment, we talked about impacts to the financial advisory business. You did a great job kind of giving us the macro and the micro. But now I want to shift gears and talk about the investor, because we have so many people in this country that are all over the place. Uh, some are dealing with, or many are dealing with the challenges of today. How are they adapting to this new technology, this new paradigm that we're all under? These are tough times. Uh, I, I mean, we, and it's hard here uh, on whatever particular day this is to assess how severe the economic decline is going to be, but there's no doubt uh, that there are many, many millions of people who have lost their jobs or are going to lose their jobs. I think we all know people whose uh, economic or financial situations uh, have deteriorated significantly. So, you know, I think it's a time for empathy. Um, it's a time for uh, introspection. What I'd first start out by saying is that uh, there's a concept of financial wellness that I think folks should level set with in terms of, okay, what, what are we really trying to accomplish? Because the answer isn't more, and, and I've written a lot about this, that, that quest for more, that quest to have more money, to be rich, so to speak, uh, that's actually psychologically or emotionally very unsatisfying. Uh, there are other concepts that we can use that are much more useful um, as we sort of cl climb the mountain. So financial wellness actually has uh, four different elements. Uh, the first is getting by, and, and that is the ability just to cover your day-to-day -day or your month-to-month your -month bills. The, the, the second is feeling safe, meaning that your position to um, a deal with an emergency uh, as it comes the, the third piece to financial wellness is achieving goals. And that's the idea that you've got things set out in front of you, a new home, paying for college, retirement is the, the big topic, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and, and that you're on track to meet those goals. And then the fourth is what I call funding contentment, which is a broader sense of purpose and your ability to afford those things. So e each of those is a deep well. But what I'll say is that this current crisis, uh, uh, unfortunately, has brought many of us quickly to kind of the bottom of that ladder in terms of, can I afford my monthly bills? Do I have an emergency savings plan that I could can put into place? What is my social network that I can lean on friends, family, colleagues, and so forth that can help me out and vice versa? If I'm okay, who can I be helping, whether it be uh, directly friends or family that we know or strangers through charity, through food banks and such? Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I think in the short run, people are trying I, what I would call just surviving. I mean, you're much more eloquent in how you deliver that, but just kind of surviving and trying to do those things. Brian, what do you think this means in to, uh, this, this impact, this, this period of time that we're under? We don't know how long this quarantine or this social distancing is gonna last. It could last for some many months. It could last for others, you know, just end in, at the end of April or into, into mm -hmm. early May. Yeah. Uh, but what does this mean in terms of disruption for 
all the things that we have talked about, you have talked about, I've talked about, the industry has talked about in terms of saving and planning and financial security. Does this set us back tremendously many, many years as a industry, as individuals? Or do you think it, that we're, you know, we pick right back up where we, we are when things kind of resume some level of normalcy? Right, yeah. And you know, that's the question or the debate, what's the, the new normal going to look like? Because I think it's fair to predict that the world won't look exactly like it did three months ago once some switch gets flipped and you know, um, the, the virus goes away. I, I think we all know realistically uh, that that's not going to be the case. Um, right. The way I think about it is that uh, in, in every crisis, there's a series of opportunities that, that emerge. And so, you know, there's playing defense and there's playing offense. When, when we're playing defense, it's about emergency savings. It's about taking care of you and your, you, yourself and your, your loved ones. And doing that here and now, but also planning to, or putting yourself in a position to, to do that in the months and years to come. And then playing offense in terms of, okay, I do have this time at home. M maybe I'm getting by all right. What was my plan? Did I even have one? So I think what this does, you know, just sort of bringing together kind of a conversation about the future of the advice business, as well as the uh, to, and the future of personal finance, is that this, unfortunately, but also is a perfect opportunity for us to uh, evaluate or reevaluate our priorities, think about what really goes into a meaningful life and and what we need to to spend and and borrow and earn in order to uh, afford that meaningful life and, and write it down. And it's not being written down in stone tablets. It's being written down in pencil on paper, which means it's going to change over time. But having that point to step off from, it's just so critically important. And last question, Brian. I mean, it, it's still meaningful. I agree with you what you're saying, by the way. And I, I, I think we'll return to some level of normalcy, although it'll be things will certainly be different. And we've learned certainly some new business practices that are a little bit more acceptable now than they were previously. Uh, but is it about breaking, when you're talking with your clients or you're talking about financial wellness, is it about breaking things into more manageable pieces that little bites, right? Little bites and do this. And I think that's kind of what you're articulating. You don't have to have the point A to point Z and just go through all of those steps. You might be adapting and you might skip a step or you might come back to a step over time. Yeah, the, the challenge, Jeff, is that managing money life has lots of different dimensions. And generally, as a society, we have no education or training in approaching what needs to be done. So if we talk about money life, earning, saving, spending, investing, borrowing, and so forth, each of those is a specific domain of, of thought and activity. And each of them requires a, a, a fair amount of planning. And so, yes much better to thin slice and deal with a larger number of small issues where you, you can make progress along the way. Yeah. The, the key is starting somewhere. And it's not thinking, well, I need to have it all figured out. I need to have my retirement accounts funded tomorrow. No, it's really about taking all of those different domains and from your own authentic voice saying, well, what's really important first? What am I going to solve for? And, and diving in. Yeah, I think it's this is a time, like you said, for looking at all your documentation, your budgets, but also time for certain for, for some introspection and thinking about what you really want, where you want to live, what you like, etc. Brian, always a pleasure chatting with you. Really appreciate you sharing some of your wisdom about financial wellness and perspective. And we look forward to having you back on the program very soon. My pleasure. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Hope you found it educational and entertaining all at the same time. Have a topic or someone of interest that you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And of course, for all the news in retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, check out today's edition of our newsletter, The Morning Pulse. So until tomorrow, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, Roll with the changes. Attention.
The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has officially authorized new benefits that Medicare Advantage plans may include. To get the benefits you deserve, you can call the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. If you're on Medicare, this is important information. I called the Medicare Coverage Helpline and they instantly looked up my coverage. In this one simple call, they offered to enroll me in a plan that includes rides to medical appointments, private home aides, doctors and nurses visits by telephone, and even home delivered meals. The plan also includes dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, all at no additional cost. Don't delay. Call to see if the new benefits are available in your area. Call the number on your screen now. It's free. Call 1-800-757-1451. That's 1-800-757-1451.